I'm, I'm going to pick up a lot of the points that came up here called the purchase price. So while I'm quite conv uh, convinced now that electric vehicles are uh, a new technology forward for us, if I go to the shop now, I see that the purchase price is still higher. So my question for all of you next is, when will I see the purchase price of electric cars become equal to or even lower than a gasoline car in the future? And how can technology policy and uh, business help in doing that? It will be very soon. I'm expecting around 2025, uh, the purchase price cheaper than a classical car, combustion engine car, and uh, maybe even sooner. And the reason for that is the development of the technology. In fact, the biggest price uh, part of the price of the car is the battery price. And we saw uh, last five years and a huge dive in the battery price. Just five years ago was one kilowatt hour of battery, almost thousand dollars. Now we, uh, we are at uh, level of 200 and it's still going down with the mass production, with the new technology developments and uh, with the widespread of the electric vehicles. <laughs> There is also another drivers, which is, of course, this mass production of an all parts, interchangeability, an important factor, but also advances in power electronics and energy conversion, which will push the price down further to the lower prices. So I expect that this will be, an, uh, by 2025, really a cheaper car than combustion engine car. Yes, uh, I agree uh, totally with uh, Professor Bauer. Uh, it's uh, all about uh, economies, economies by lack of scale, uh, you could say. Uh, it's a new technology. Uh, if you look at the production numbers, they're sometimes one-offs. And in many, in many cases now, it's small series. But the whole supply chain has to uh, come to life. Uh, and economies of scale will drive down not only the batteries, but also the, the, the whole production of the electric vehicle. Um, however, the, the statement that the sticker price is higher is even not true today. Uh, because if you look at the Tesla Model S, it's mentioned before, uh, and you compare it with a Maserati with the same acceleration and the same looks and the same quality, the Maser Maserati is more expensive than the pes Tesla Model S to buy. Also, another thing what will change it for the private uh, owner, because uh, we should admit an, an that in the Netherlands, uh, the EV private didn't take off yet. Uh, even in the second-hand market, it doesn't sell, uh, because there were hardly no incentives. So those buyers were very pure looking at what do I get for the money. And now, uh, the last years, you see that a uh, private lease is coming up. And you can uh, private lease, uh, for instance, a Nissan Leaf already for below 400 euro. And if you look at that price, which is in fact the total cost of ownership price, uh, but then in a lease contract, it's cheaper than the competition. And that's because the energy is included. So the electricity and the fast, net, uh, fast charging is included. So it's already cheap. So I think uh, 2022 is certainly uh, the break even. But already when you look very closely and think about it, it's already there. Okay, that's uh, very promising for the future. It is very promising, but I do not think that the average car buyer is um, very concerned about whether to choose the Tesla Model S or a Maserati. No. I think, you know, we there are, are talking about <laughs> when are electric cars really the cheapest alternative, the best alternative in the mass car market. Uh, okay, this is this moment is, is, is certainly going to come. I think it's going to come pretty soon, but I don't have a crystal ball and neither do policymakers have a crystal ball. It is evident, though, that governments around the world have been very active to make electric mobility competitive. You know, the sooner the better. Um, before they started incentivizing car owners with subsidies and, and, and uh, fiscal stimuli, Governments have been investing a lot in research and development and demonstration programs to speed up the introduction of electric vehicles in the market. And now it is all about stimulating the demand side of the market. 
you know, to, to make it really happen. Um, for governments, you know, what is a complicating factor is that there are more interests at stake than just, you know, stimulating um, electric cars for air quality reasons or energy transition reasons or climate policy reasons. There is also a thing such as economic policy which includes industrial policy and, indust and and government also has to protect established industrial interests and we have to make sure that you know the, the established industry if we if countries have a, an extensive car manufacturing industry is not just you know uh, evaporating um, uh, without you know an alternative to replace the jobs getting lost and i think we are now at a point where we are quite confident that Electric mobility is going to break through in the market quite soon, you know, in the in 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 the near f in the near future. But governments, uh, uh, governments, and their you know uh, national industrial champions are now competing for the future electric vehicle market uh, in terms of technology leadership and in terms of manufacturing facilities, yeah. and that is mainly because of employment opportunities involved. Um, you know, it's it's um, one of the signals here is, for instance, um, Maros Sefcovic, uh, one of the vice presidents of the European Commission. Mm -hmm. You know, in October 2017, only last October, he announced that Europe is going to make billions of euros available to support the establishment of large-scale battery manufacturing facilities yeah. in Europe, and that That's is, you know, news. with the aim to create four to five million new jobs. Yeah. Margot mentioned a very important uh, point, and it is uh, automated vehicle driving automated way. And this will also, from technology point of view, completely change the usage of the vehicle. You can imagine you are coming home, getting out of the car, which is driving automatically. The car itself goes to the yeah. charging spot somewhere nearby or maybe even further away, charge himself and stays again ready when you need it. So all these worries about the range anxiety, about the charging it and taking cables, they will be removed by contactless charging, by the automatic driving. So we are heading to the completely new landscape of the driving, which we have to really now uh, try to understand and as estimate the effect of it. But this will also give a huge stimulus to the people to purchase an electric vehicle. And this is something which is technology driven, in fact. So if I uh, conclude some of the observations from this discussion, uh, I can make uh, uh, four conclusions. The first is that the total cost of ownership of electric vehicles is already lower than conventional gasoline vehicles. So that's already mm -hmm. uh, a win situation for uh, electric mobility. Um, in terms of buying price of electric vehicles, you see already, for example, the luxury segment that are electric vehicles are already cheaper than conventional vehicles, while in the mass market segment, you still have the purchase price of electric vehicles being high higher. And this is where the role of governments come in, where they provide subsidies and other methodologies to encourage people in the mass market segment to buy electric vehicles. However, electric vehicles are, and the, and the, policy make, uh, the policies are not able to s ensure the adoption on the long term, because if you remove a policy, these, uh, the, the buying effect on the electric vehicles is reduced.